Cody Rhodes finally made a big hint towards his WWE return, so we'll see what he had to say. We'll also check out what's going on with Damage Control, a big WWE return, and much more. Let's start things off with Cody Rhodes. Cody's return to WWE took over all the reports and generated all the buzz towards the start of 2022. The overall idea that one of the core founding pieces of AEW was coming back to WWE was just an idea that fans couldn't wrap their heads around and thought it would never happen. And when the buzz and rumors continued to grow about Cody's return, everyone was intrigued to see if it was true or not. It actually was true, and Cody Rhodes had one of the most spectacular and largest returns we've seen in a very long time. Returning on the WrestleMania stage and picking up a big win over a well-established top guy like Seth Rollins, all on his first night back. Cody laid out his plan to make it to the WWE Championship a few nights later on Raw and continued to face Seth Rollins for the following few months. But where this dream run all ended at was, of course, with his torn pec. Cody earned a lot of respect for wrestling an entire match from start to finish with a torn pec. Everyone says that Cody has that old school mentality that you gotta work through injuries, especially if it's for a big match that you promise the fans. Cody and Seth were the main event of that pay-per-view. WWE was fully prepared to replace Cody Rhodes in that match. But it was his decision to compete that night with such a horrific injury. Cody immediately was written off of WWE television and had surgery done on his torn pec after that match with Seth Rollins. He said from the very start that he'll continue to harass his doctors and training staff to see when the earliest possible return date can be. But now, Cody Rhodes seems to be hinting at another idea for his upcoming return. TMZ Sports recently caught up with Cody Rhodes out in public, and he gave them a few intriguing answers to their questions. He had this to say about his recovery process so far and his eventual return to WWE. Quote, They know I'm stupid, and I'd try to test it. I got in my mind where I want to be, and I think a lot of fans have in their mind where I'd like to be, and that's hopefully where it's at. They've treated me like the house that built me, and honestly, it was amazing. We were back and everything was rolling so fast. And then I tore my pec. It was like the best three months of my life. Hopefully get back to that soon, end quote. So the big takeaway there from Cody's comments was his line about his return being at a place where the fans are already talking about. That could very well be a clear reference to Royal Rumble. Cody is expected to fully recover from his injury by late 2022, early 2023. And if that's the case, it makes a lot of sense to just save that return for a big Royal Rumble surprise. It could be number 30, number one, or have way through the match, but a Cody Rhodes return in the Royal Rumble match has been one of the biggest fan discussions out there for a long time. And according to Cody's comments right there, it sounds like he's hoping for some sort of Royal Rumble return as well. And like it's been discussed a lot lately, the only two WrestleMania 39 opponents that make the most sense for Roman Reigns is either Cody Rhodes or The Rock. So if The Rock can't make it, Cody Rhodes really does seem like the obvious choice to win the Royal Rumble and have a chance at achieving his dreams of winning a WWE world title. Especially being the one to end a nearly three year long title reign in the main event of WrestleMania will really put a huge exclamation point on Cody's first WWE world title win. So it looks like not only are the fans hoping for a Royal Rumble return, that's what Cody Rhodes even wants as well. Monday Night Raw featured another big return this week for the women's division. Candice LeRae made her long-awaited return to WWE by making a surprise appearance on Raw. When Johnny Gargano and Candice stepped away from WWE last year for the birth of their first child, it was unknown if either of them would return to WWE down the line. Then rumors started going around that Johnny was signed and before you knew it, he returned on Raw. So once Gargano returned, fans speculated that his wife, Candice, wouldn't be that far behind him with her own return to WWE. And that was true. 
Candice made her return to WWE only a few weeks after her husband's return to the company. Candice made a very heavy impact right away by knocking off Nikki A.S.H. That match was important for both sides because it instantly helps Candice gain momentum by knocking off a former women's Raw champion. And it also helps Nikki because it looks like that loss is about to jumpstart a character change for her as well. Nikki is growing frustrated of the superhero cosplay, ripping her mask off, and some fans feel like Nikki Cross may finally be coming back slowly but surely. So that's a nice little transformation story to keep an eye on as well. But back to Candice, it didn't take that long for her to align herself with Bianca's babyface faction. Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka formed this alliance with each other right after SummerSlam because they all had that common enemy of damage control. And the only way to fight off these three was to form a team of three as well. So Bianca's faction was a direct response to damage control. Everyone thought it would be a short-term thing and how Bianca's faction wouldn't be around after Clash at the Castle. But somehow, they're still together. So despite the three of them not having an official name and still making separate entrances, it would appear that they very well may be an official faction going forward. Some fans think it's a bit of a weird position for Alexa and Asuka because these are two multi-time women's champions that are just tagging along with Bianca Belair as basically her sidekicks. So if you look at it like that, then yeah, you're maybe wondering why Asuka or Alexa Bliss are just standing by when they could be going after the Raw women's title themselves. And that's true, but it looks like they're staying together and possibly bringing in Candice LeRae into the group as well. The backstage segment after Candice's match showed her standing by Bianca, Alexa, and Asuka's side against Damage Control. So maybe this is how Bianca Belair gets the upper hand on Damage Control. Now she could have four members in her group while Bailey only has three. So that brings everyone to ask the next big question, which is, will Damage Control add a new member to balance out these new four on three odds? Bailey never ruled out the idea of adding new members to Damage Control, and now she actually has a prime opportunity to add someone to the group. The popular fan pick right now is Indy Hartwell. Her main roster return was originally reported with Sola Sokoa's, and he made his main roster debut nearly a month ago. So everyone feels like Indy could be any week now herself. So she's leading the list of possibilities for Damage Control's fourth member. Bianca Belair probably has a majority of the women's roster on her side, so Bailey and Damage Control could go to NXT to look for that new fourth member. So it's very interesting. If these women's factions are expecting even more, you have to start wondering if this could all be leading towards a big War Games match at Survivor Series. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.